Welcome to Magic Gathering Strat. This is Bava, and I wanted to try a new format for looking at a rogue deck. And this is sort of just a preview. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the deck and look at the deck composition. Um, we'll watch a match. Um, in the future, I might do a number of matches, um, sort of sped up, but without commentary. Um, and then maybe we'll talk a little bit at the end about <coughs> the impressions I got from the match and what changes we might make. Um, I don't get a chance to do a lot of testing, and I don't do a lot of tinkering with these things, so sometimes they're just very rough ideas. <clears throat> and they're probably rough ideas that other people have had before. Um, this one was called Blink Walker initially because I kind of wanted to fit this walker dude in here. Which one was he? Um, this guy. Where's the preview? <clears throat> the Walker of the Grove. Um, and this might be another deck using the Walker of the Grove with things like Undying Evil and Ghostly Flicker. I mean, Walker of the Grove is kind of the popper format Thrag Tusk, right? I mean, you don't gain the 5 life, but you get a 4-4 elemental creature. So for 6 mana, you can get an 8-8 eight, eight and a 4-4 four, four on the field with Undying Evil in this guy. So that could be an interesting green-black deck. Um, <clears throat> or if you can get this guy out for 8 with a lot of ramp, then you can do things like flicker him and bring in four fours, uh, use Undying Evil, um, stuff like that. But anyway, Walker got knocked out of the current deck, but that's why I called it Blink Walker initially. I don't know what I'm calling it now. I think it's a Evil Morning or something like that, the, the Morn Welk. And so let's talk about what's going on here. Um, the main goal of this deck <coughs> is to use flicker and evil effects to recur things that are large but are hard to cast. As you can see, we've got no green mana and lots of green dudes, but they have morph for three. So essentially you'd pay three mana to keep these guys uh, face down, and if you had uh, two of them out there, or even one in like a mold drifter, or one in a mnemonic wall, then you can flip it <coughs> by uh, flickering it, um, and then you have this 7-4 dude, or this 5-4 dude. Um, alternately, you could have it there as a 2-2, then use it as a blocker uh, with Undying Evil, and bring it back as an 8-5 with Trample, with Undying Evil. <clears throat> um, so that's kind of some of the interactions there. Along with the Morph guys, of which we have... Let me make this a little bit smaller. <clears throat> the Morph guys, of which we have the Titanic Bull Boxes and the Tree Spring Lorians. We also have some Evoke Fellows. Um, we have the Moldrifter, of course. Moldrifter Undying Evil is a great combo. Um, even once you have the Moldrifter out, um, Ghostly Flickering it gives plus you draw two cards, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, mnemonic Walls, we do have four. It might be too many, because we only have the eight spells to bring back. But since the deck really hinges around these eight spells, I kind of like having them, and they're pretty good blockers. <coughs> um, the Aether Snipes... Um, evoke for three. Um, additionally, if you had the Undying Evil, you could get this guy out as a 5-5 five, five, and bounce two non-land permanents, either of your opponents or of your own, if you wanted to bounce, for instance, a Mnemonic Wall. Uh, you could do that to get your Undying Evil back. Um, I think the all-star of the deck, in my opinion, and we'll get to see the match, is the Mornwalk. Um, so this guy <coughs> costs seven for a 3-3, three, three, and he includes a uh, Mind Rot. So that's not super great. But for 5 mana, if we have the Undying Evil, we can get a 4-4 four, four out and have our opponent discard 4 cards. And I kind of like that. And then once we have this guy in play, we can flicker him and have your opponent discard 2 cards at any point, um, which is pretty sweet. This deck is running 24 land. Um, and because we're running so much land, though we do kind of need it for some of this stuff, we have a lot of fancy land, and we have all of the barren moors and all of the lonely sandbars, so if we start getting flooded, we can cycle these. <coughs> um, a couple of Bojuka Bogs, which I don't know if they're in there, but I like Bojuka Bogs. Um, they're handy. The Demir Aqueducts, of course, some islands, a couple swamps, and then some terramorphic expanses. Um, so that's what this deck is doing. Let's watch a match and see how it goes.
All right, so we saw one match where things went pretty well. Um, but, you know, I think there's a lot of room for improvement in this deck. Um, our curve is really weird. I mean, we have the Cloud Fin Raptors in here as um, our one drops, really. Um, and the first few turns, we're going to be tinkering a lot with our mana. So, not super exciting. Um, I do like the Cloud Fin Raptors because every time you flicker something huge or Undying Evil something huge, they evolve. So it's pretty easy in this deck to get them up to like five, six flyers. Um, and so they can be your beatdown um, if the other things <coughs> end up dying or, or not coming through. Um, even though we have all these flickers and all these Undying Evils, I wish we had more of these effects. Um, so, or just more more spells, more things that we could do with our mana early on. We spend those first few turns trying to fix our mana so desperately. Um, and it works pretty well. We have enough land in here to make it work out, but it's not super wonderful. Um, I don't know if we need all of these. Still, I mentioned that. I'm not super fond of the Aether Snipes. I think of all of our creatures, they are the least impressive. Uh, the morph is a little bit easier because you can do that for three um, and just have them on the table and then wait until you get the Undying Evil or the Flicker. Um, the Evoke creatures really require that you have the card that you need in hand and the mana. So with the Flicker, that's really challenging. Um, you need six mana, essentially, to Evoke and Flicker an Aether Snipe. <clears throat> and we only have the four Undying Evils. Um, so... It's a challenge, and we can use the, you know, I use at one point the Undying Evil on a Tree Spring Lorien to bring him back as a 6-5 from his morphed state, and then of course he immediately dies after that. And then I draw a Mournwalk the next turn and wish that I really had the Undying Evil. So it's a bit challenging, um, but yeah, the Aether Snipe's not super exciting, so maybe we cut the Aether Snipe, we go down to like 24 creatures, maybe even 22 if we cut some Mnemonic Walls. I'm not convinced that's the right bet. If we get rid of the Aether Snipes, then maybe we add in four other spells. Um, that could be pretty good. Maybe we add in some Crypt Rats so that we have uh, some sort of sweeper on the board. Um, and those help keep us alive until we get our creatures up. <coughs> and that could help quite a bit. Or maybe we just have some spot removal or something along those lines um, to help us live a little bit longer. I'm not totally sure what we would put in instead of the Aether Snipes. But I think that there they could go. Um, and I think it's possible the Tree Spring Lorien could go. <clears throat> I like our interactions uh, here and over here. Um, I guess it's this six drop column that we could consider some other options. But I think we have a, a shell of a deck here that could work out OK. So maybe, uh, maybe it's something that um, I'll work on a little bit more and see if we can, uh, can fine tune this. All right, well, thanks for watching Magic Gathering Strat. This was Baba doing a Papa Rogue deck preview of uh, Blink Walker version, I don't know, Alpha 0.1. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.